at this time, I would like to invite Dr. Jerry Gibbons up to uh, this afternoon. We are so blessed to have him on our staff. He's a very, he's a generous uh, individual, doctor, uh, as well as he gives this time to our community. Thank you very much, right? Yes, yes. Thank you very much, Dr. Gibbons. Well, hi, everyone. Uh, let me say hi to a few people that are here uh, that are uh, notable. Simon is our one of our administrators, and uh, Sean Usry is the Director of Medical Affairs here. My wife is here. Uh, Bob McDowell here is here, who is a uh, was chairman of the board of the uh, of Cox Skaggs recently. So, um, you know, this is about this is a highly technical piece of equipment that we're talking about and what's interesting is and I may be dating myself a little bit in this crowd but when I first came to town 30 years ago the technology was a little different I was I was I was uh, carrying a roll of quarters in my pocket there were no cell phones carrying a roll of quarters in my pocket so I could use the uh, pay phones when I got when I got called. We didn't have any computers from a, from a medical standpoint. We had we had uh, uh, we had x-rays that would slide up on the boxes remember so if we wanted x-rays we would have to send somebody to radiology and bring a whole package of x-rays and slide them up on the screen. Uh, you know, there's no such thing as electronic medical records. Everything was typed. I don't even know if they had the, you know, I think it was the old fashioned typewriters. So, I mean, it was crazy what we had 30 years ago. Now, we've got a computer in the room. All the x rays are on the computer that we and the patient can see. Um, all the records are there on the computer. Back then, if you had four or five different doctors, you had four or five different charts. You know, you had you had the orthopods chart, and you had the cardiologist chart, and you had the primary care chart. And if you wanted to get records from somebody, back at least in the mid '80s, there wasn't even a fax machine, so it would like the lab would come in the mail. You know, you'd have the lab coming to you for from the mail. So it's it's vastly different now and, and so this is this is wild all right um, everyone's heard of many of the things uh, for screening of prostate cancer uh -oh, hold on. Um, 29,000 men die annually from prostate cancer many however as many of you know die with prostate cancer and not from it and that's what our challenge is we really don't want to over treat people like we have been doing in the medical community for years and so it is turning around and and this is a relevant slide there before the uh, 80s uh, prostate cancer was diagnosed in the late stages and ma mainly with a rectal exam and nodules then PSA came on board and as many of you are old enough to remember when PSA came up, which was in the late 80s, everyone got a PSA, right? They even had PSAs done at grocery stores. Everyone got a PSA. Everyone who had an elevated PSA got a prostate biopsy. And everyone that got a prostate biopsy that had cancer got what? Treated. That's changed a little bit. But the, the way of biopsying the prostate has not changed. That's been the same for 30 years until now, where it was a blind, it's been a blind ultrasound biopsy in the office, in the doctor's office. Um, and so now what we're trying to do is everyone does not get a PSA. In, in other words, if you're, if you're too sick, if you're, too old, meaning not so much chronological old, but if you just if if you're if you're on this many medications, 
it's probably not worth doing screening from your standpoint. You don't really need to go through all that. So everyone does not get a PSA. In fact, the guidelines now are somewhere between 50 and 70, unless the 70 plus year old is quite healthy and he just wants, wants a PSA. So everyone does not get a PSA. Every elevated PSA does not get a biopsy and every cancer does not get treated. So that's the latest now, that's what we're trying to abide by. The MRI fusion biopsy is what we're talking about today and what that is, is as I said, the, ult, the way we've been doing things is the old ultrasound biopsy. So the patient comes into the office and he has a probe placed in the rectum and the ultrasound takes a picture of the rectum, but it doesn't give a, it can't see any lesions. All it can do is like see the outline of the rectum and then we do random biopsies. And that's what is done commonly even now. And it's, it's a painful procedure under local and it's blind. So there's no specific lesion they're looking at. The MRI, the MRI fusion is, what it is, is the patient has an MRI because it's been in the last few years that MRIs have, we've determined that you can actually see a lesion, something that's suspicious on the MRI. So the patient has an MRI and then we can fuse that MRI picture to an ultrasound picture and biopsy the exact lesion. And this is the machine uh, the Artemis machine and UMS, uh, who is sponsoring this today, are the ones that own this machine. And in our case, we have a partnership with them that is throughout Missouri, and we are uh, and we use that machine and their technician. And we go and they go to our hospital. They go to uh, Walnut Lawn in Springfield. They go to, they service the uh, urologist at Cape Girardeau and all the urologists in Jeff City and they're expanding from there. And basically, I'm just gonna give you a little, let's talk, let's just show you some basic pictures of the, uh, of the MRI. This is the prostate. We're not, these really are not pictures so much of cancer, but this is the prostate on MRI. Now this is a lesion here, right, but you can't see it very well on this picture, but this is the MRI. And right here is the prostate. And here's a picture of all the biopsies that we did. <coughs> and let me give you a history of the MRI fusion biopsy history. On a national basis, basically what we've got is that two years ago when I went to the main uh, urology conference in San Diego, where there's 10,000 urologists, there was a lot of interest in the MRI fusion biopsy. So I came back here and I started asking some questions and there wasn't a lot of interest here. and. So I was kind of thinking how we could, how we could do that because nobody was doing it. Nobody in Springfield, nobody in entire Southwest Missouri, nobody in Northwest Arkansas. So no one was doing it. But the universities were doing it. MU, Little Rock, Barnes, KU. And so we're going, okay, this is a prostate biopsy and these universities are doing it and we can't do it somehow. And so we just started investigating and, and, I and I started looking into it and it became apparent pretty quickly that Cox had the most powerful MRI in the region at the Martin Center uh, by Cox South. It's called a 3T uh, machine. And I asked the director of the Martin Center, um, how many prostate uh, how many prostate MRIs are you doing? And she says, well, we're doing three a year, you know, for the entire region, three a year. And they're almost like ordered accidentally. But there, the problem was, of course, there was no radiologist that could read them. 
and nobody in Springfield can read them. So what happened last year is a radiology a radiologist who had been training in Kansas City uh, was hired by Cox who has extensive experience with MRI prostate. So Dr. McCann can read those. We've got one person in Southwest and Northwest in Southwest Missouri that can read MRI prostates. So we have her and we have us working on this with my administration and with UMS. And so we basically put it together and now we have done 70 MRI fusion biopsies at this facility. The total number of MRI fusion biopsies in Springfield to this date has been 12. Now they are in my partners at Farrell Duncan have purchased a machine and they are starting to ramp it up, but we have done five times more than anyone else has, and nobody in Northwest Arkansas has done any yet. So that's the, uh, that's the current story. We're probably doing six or seven per month, and we do them all in the operating room. One of the nice things about this is it's done in the operating room, so you have an anesthetic, uh, and uh, so you don't have that pain. Um, and the fact that we're doing the MRI means that we're really doing fewer biopsies than we were before. We've knocked out biopsies because of the MRI. Uh, this is our current protocol. Generally 50 to 70 years old, but you can go younger or older, depending on health status. If a PSA is up, we get what's called a 4K, which is a blood test that gives us another PSA, but it also gives us a percentage risk of significant cancer. So if the, P if the 4K is 20%, that's significant, and we would go on to something else. If it's 4%, we call that normal, and we stop right there. If, the, if there's continued suspicion, then we order the MRI at the Martin Center. If the MRI, if the MRI has suspicious lesions on it, then we will do the fusion biopsy in the operating room. And those are same day surgery with an anesthetic. And we've had, to this point, no significant complications. But you, you know, as a doctor, you can't guarantee everything. Okay, I've got two case studies and then we'll uh, throw the floor open for a few questions. A mid 70 year old white male with three prior office biopsies that were negative, had a PSA of 11 and no biopsy and no nodule and we did a, uh, he had a suspicious lesion and we did a uh, biopsy and found all the lesions that we, all the biopsies of that lesion from the MRI showed cancer in it. So it had three prior negative biopsies. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for something that finds cancer when other things did not. Second one, a guy in his 60s referred from an outside urologist for an elevated PSA, prior negative biopsy this year. PSA 7.6, suspicious on the MRI, and we found 65% cancer in the biopsy lesion. So he was also sent for definitive treatment. So that's, that's it in a nutshell, what we're doing here. And uh, I think Cox Branson is kind of a laboratory for innovation. And it's not just urology, it's other things. We can go, we can move a little quicker than some of the bigger institutions. We we want to do what we can do well. If we can't do it well, we want somebody else to do it. But if we can do it, like we said, there's no reason we couldn't do prostate biopsies well because we've been doing it. So that's the story. Any